Welcome back to Shoot the Shot, an NBA and variety show. Your host, Jonathan Osborne. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Luke Silvia. Luke, what it do, man? How are you doing? Uh, you know, just just watched our uh, team favorite magic drop a, so drop a game. It up. And right. uh, hey, it's, it's what's on, it's on the brain. Starting. So that's what I just watched. Fair. Um, I'm seeing the Lakers are struggling against OKC right now. You guys can let me know how that one ends. I'm sure we'll know here in a couple minutes. But um, yeah, I mean, other than that, man, it's cold here in Nebraska. It's stupid. Um, it's been like 30s, 40s, low 40s. I, it's raining today. I mean, it just, you know, I don't know. We had about a good week of fall, and I feel like we're already getting to winter. So, uh, Yeah, it's going to be like high of like 70 here this week. So it's like just absolutely just balmy. Perfect. Yeah. That's good. I like that. That's beautiful. That's perfect outdoor basketball weather. It's like 60 to mm-hmm. 70, like right there. Give me that year round. Won't complain um, really anything at all. So, uh, Luke, this week um, you know, we're going to talk a few things. We're going to talk Bulls. Bulls off to a 4 0 start. One of the only undefeated teams left I'm in the Golden league, State. Alongside the Golden State Warriors. Yep. Uh, we'll talk about the Lakers. Obviously, you just talked about the fact that, you know, the Lakers right now. Um, playing the Thunder that game right now. Two minutes left. They're down by six in OKC. Um, no LeBron tonight, so it's really just the uh, Anthony Davis, you know, Russell Westbrook show going on there. Uh, but we'll talk about you know whether or not we're really concerned, uh, you know, about the Lakers. I mean, they're two and two, so it's not terrible, but it's not great, uh, especially you know OKC right now. By like every metric you look at, it, it's been the worst team in the league to start the year. So not a great loss for the Lakers. Uh, but then, you know, first week of NBA season is over. We're going to talk about some of the rookies, the rookies that have stood out to us, uh, you know, who might be like our you know surprise rookie or, or favorite rookie so far. And then, as always, you guys know, we're going to get into, you know, some bets and everything like that. Um, before we actually get into the show, we've got a couple of housekeeping items uh, first thing, if you guys don't know already, we started a Patreon a few weeks back. We've got three separate tiers on that. A $2 tier where if you just want to support the show, you're able to do that. Then we have a $5 tier and a $10 tier that come with some great benefits, like getting shouted out on the show, which we'll do in just a second. Um, in the $10 tier, you get access to like exclusive Patreon uh, podcast episodes, uh, a week, um, a monthly uh, rather zoom call with us to just kind of hang out hear some behind the scenes stuff about what's going on the show and, and everything like that so if you're interested in that you can go to uh, patreon.com slash the six man show uh, if you want to check out our patreon uh, we'll go ahead and shout out uh, some of the new patrons this week so we've got jonathan borgus norm l and then Magic Player History, shout out to Magic Player History, one of the best follows on Instagram if you are um, interested in Orlando Magic Player History. And then we'll just go ahead and shout out all the patrons here. Uh, so yeah, uh, again, Magic Player History, Norm L, Jonathan Borges, Ellis, Nathan Lynn, Carson Tulo, Zico, Keith Garcia, Armin, Drew Gooden, Court Cousins. Luke, that list is growing like week over week. So really, really appreciate everyone's support. Um, it's a big help. Running the podcast is not free. So uh, your support helps us run the podcast, and it helps us do cool things, uh, you know, like future uh, you know, giveaways. Luke, over the last week, 72% of our viewers on YouTube um, are people that are not subscribed to us. So if you guys have been watching the YouTube channel for a little bit, if you enjoy the content really quickly, if you could just leave us a like, subscribe, uh, it goes a long way to help uh, help the channel and help the podcast as well. And then if you guys are listening to the podcast on Apple, um, if you could just hit that pause button really, really fast, uh, take one minute to leave us a five-star rating. Um, it's a really, really big help. It goes a long way helping the podcast kind of boost us up the charts so we can get some more uh, you know, exposure and, um, yeah, just try to bring you guys the best show that we can. All right, Luke, we're going to talk about the Lakers. So, again, Lakers, that game's still going on. There's a minute 30 left. Lakers are down by six, so they're probably going to lose this game uh, to the Thunder, which is going to leave them two and three on the year um, with wins against the Spurs and Grizzlies, losses to the Suns, the Warriors, and then the Oklahoma City Thunder is what it looks like. Luke, are you concerned about the Lakers at all? Not not entirely, just because of LeBron James, right? And there's no like I mean the only thing to back that up is the you know the fact that like when the Lakers won the championship there uh with with AD and LeBron, they started out that season very rocky, right? It was a chemistry, you know, centric um, you know, thing to start the year for them. 
they get their chemistry together, they end up, you know, winning, you know, the championship, obviously. But um, with LeBron getting a little older, even though LeBron is nowhere near the problem right now, um, you know, with LeBron getting a little older, I do wonder kind of what, you know, when's the when's the bottom going to fall out for LeBron? Right now, he's shooting some ridiculous stats. I'm, you know, I'm thinking you had pulled up that you could share with us in a second. But as far as his three point shooting volume and percentage, but I would be concerned about the Lakers if it wasn't for LeBron. Um, Russell Westbrook seems to be the issue, yeah, just wholeheartedly. I mean, last night they they have a game um, that they you know get the win against San Antonio, and um, but my whole thing was. Russ just isn't used to being the third option. He's he's never been the third option on any team. And so now he's a third option, but then last night they get the win. He I think he played fairly well last night. Um and you know, and I think that really is he yeah, shot 15 for 27 from the field, uh 33 10 and 8. Seems like the old Westbrook. And it's because he's the number 2 option last night. Uh now he's going to have his nights where he's just Russ and he shoots terrible from 3 like he did tonight and you know, whatever. So, yeah, I think that he's just never been the number three option. I do worry that he's going to fit into that role and kind of how that's going to go for him. Yeah, I mean, for me, the reason that I'm not worried about this team is because I didn't have high expectations for them really to start the season. Anytime you're adding personalities like a Russell Westbrook, a Carmelo Anthony to a team that has other big personalities, talk about Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Dwight Howard, uh, you know, Rajon Rondo, DeAndre Jordan, it's going to take time for these guys to gel and kind of get that chemistry. Now, my concern is, you know, the other night in San Antonio, Anthony Davis, you know, everybody was freaking out on Twitter. It looked like he had a pretty significant knee injury. Now, obviously, you know, he's playing tonight, 30 points for him. Right now he's 12 of 22 from the floor. The Lakers are down one with 50 seconds left. So we might have a completely different conversation here in a moment. But, um, yeah, Anthony Davis, you know, Russell Westbrook, LeBron, now LeBron's been out the last couple of games with like the ankle soreness. So I think that's really my concern right now is like you just got to get everyone healthy to start build chemistry. Um, but when those guys are healthy, you know, give them, you know, a couple of months and they're going to figure things out. The Lakers, they have enough talent. It's not like they need necessarily home court advantage throughout the playoffs. Now, is that helpful? Yeah, absolutely. But I, I just don't think that it's totally necessary. Uh, they can sneak into the playoffs as a you know six or seven seed, end up in the finals. Like that's something that's entirely possible. Uh, you mentioned you know some of the guys shooting the ball like really well. LeBron James right now this is absolutely incredible. Um, Nine point seven attempts from the three point line. The guy shooting forty eight point three percent from the three point line through three games. But then you look at Anthony Davis. You look at Russell Westbrook coming in tonight. Not counting this game against. Um, Oklahoma City, Anthony Davis, 15% from three on 3.3 attempts. Russell Westbrook, uh, 13% from three on 3.8 attempts a game. So those guys either need to figure it out, start shooting the ball a little bit better, which, I mean, they can't shoot the ball any worse. Um, But, yeah, they just got to get healthy, get everybody on the right track. It's going to take a few weeks for them to, you know, know, gel. But right now, this, uh, you know, Oklahoma City game kind of, you know, notwithstanding, their two losses are to the Suns, who were in the finals last year, and the Warriors, who, you know, have been one of the best teams in the league. They're 4-0. So if those were, you know, losses to, you know, like the Kings or, you know, like the Magic, I'd be a little bit more worried about them sitting at, you know, they're about to be 3-2 and or 2-3. and The loss to the Thunder is, you know, a little bit concerning. Even a, but without LeBron even James. Even a, a win to know. the Thunder tonight with the way that it's gone, man, is concerning. Like, they're favored by, like, what, six points tonight? They're supposed to win with, with or without I don't know, LeBron. Man. The, Thunder, the, th- the Thunder are kind of feisty. Like, you look at Shea tonight, 26 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists. Josh Giddy, 18 points, uh, 10 assists, 7 of 13 from the floor. Darius Baisley, 18 points, 7 of 13 from the floor, 4 of 8, like, the Thunder are shooting the crap out of the I mean, ball they're tonight. having a great shooting night, right? But like like you said, they're feisty. And and the Warriors witnessed that firsthand last and night. Russ just missed a pull-up three, basically to seal the, the loss. The worst three-point shooter Russ. in history misses. Shocker. Yep, um, the worst NBA, the worst volume three-point shooter in NBA so, history. You, you shout out from the rooftops. So, um, but I mean, like, yeah, the OKC is gritty, right? I mean, like, they, they pushed, you know, GSW to their limits last night. Um, but... 
the good teams pull it out. It doesn't really matter. Like no ifs, ands, or buts. Like obviously Steph being healthy was a big reason. But you know, if their you know third big three is there, Clay Thompson, that game's not even a question. LeBron's there. Like tonight, sure, probably you know the Lakers get the win there because LeBron is in the picture. But you know, Warriors had that. You know, they're, they're without Clay Thompson and they found a way to win the game. Um, and you know, I I mean. That's just is what it is. The good teams find out a way to beat the really bad teams. And the OKC is a well, really Steve bad Kerr team. Steve Kerr is also infinitely a better coach than Frank well, Vogel. Yes. Yeah, that's like we saw it firsthand in Orlando, you know, three, four years ago. Um, Frank Vogel now has a ring, so I don't want to be too disrespectful, but very, you know, much due to LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Let's let's not get it uh <laughs> let's not get it twisted here, folks. We all we all remember Luke Walton, you know, <laughs> looking like the greatest coach of all time, you know, coaching the Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. So it's true. I don't know, Luke. Talk to me like January fifteenth, yeah. and I'll let you know whether or not I'm concerned <laughs> about the Lakers. I'm not concerned about the Lakers right now. Yeah. All right, Luke. Something that I want to talk about. We talked, you know, um, you know, two four and teams in the league right now. Golden State Warriors. You know, kind of, you know, maybe expected. You know, they've got some of their guys healthy. Steph is playing out of his mind, but the Chicago Bulls right now, Luke, are 4-0, and I want to read off some stats here. I, I want to know, do you think the Bulls are for real? So right now, again, one of only two 4-0 teams, the Bulls and the Golden State Warriors, uh, right now they are fourth in defensive rating in the entire league. Uh, they're fourth in net rating. They are first in three-point percentage. Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan are both averaging more than 20 points per game. I think DeRozan's at 22, Levine's at 25. Nikola Vucevic, um, you know, an all-star from last year that they traded, uh, Wendell Carter, um, Otto Porter Jr., and two, uh, you know, first-round picks for Vuce, um, not playing particularly well right now. Uh, 14.3 points per game, 11.5 rebounds. He's shooting 39% from the floor, 21% from the three-point line. Um, Bulls just looking really, really good so far, Luke. Um, do you think the Bulls are for real? Um, I think... In a sense, like they're for real. I don't think they're for real as like in you know a, a number one two seed in a conference. Um, it's really interesting though. I mean, you look at them you, coming into the season. You know, you were not concerned about offensively, but you were concerned about how they would perform defensively. And it's been the opposite. Like the Bulls have been impressive, to say the least, defensively so far and have really struggled offensively and are not where they should be guys like, you know, Vucevic struggling right now. They, I mean, you just look at who their wins are against, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's the Orlando magic syndrome maybe of last year and the Cavs as well. I mean, the Cavs and the magic were top of the East after what, five, six games last year. Um, And then we know how that turned out. So you, you've got the bulls. They beat the Pistons. They beat the Pelicans. They beat the Pistons again. They beat the Raptors. So, Pistons are are zero and three, Raptors are two and three, and the Pelicans are one and four. None of those exactly scream like contender to me. None of those wins. It's like if the Lakers beat the beat the Thunder tonight. I don't care. Like that, you should beat them, right? And the Bulls are. I think. Don't get me wrong. I think that the Bulls are five seed in the East. Maybe uh, when this is all said and done, I think that's kind of a comfortable place that they will land. Um, but Jonathan, I mean, I don't know if you've looked at it or if you were you know, going to bring it up, but they, the upcoming schedule for them is just ridiculous. They, they play the Knicks tomorrow on apparently what is, or tonight as you guys listen to this at MSG and apparently what is Joachim Noah night? That's the theme. I don't know. So good luck on Joachim Noah night. Um, and then, you know, you, you, you kind of look at our, so they're actually they're, they're home, home right? Joe Kim so Noah night. Why it's right, Joe you're Kim right. Noah night. So yeah. in Chicago yes. makes in sense. Chicago. That yeah. makes sense. Um, I'm actually reading off the Bulls website. I should know that. Regardless, they play. <laughs> um, I believe it's nationally televised. Um, I could be wrong. Um, against the Knicks, it might not be, but um, they got the Knicks, the Jazz, the Celtics, the Sixers back to back, the Nets, the Mavs, the Warriors, Mavs, who by the way are kind of struggling right now too. Um, the Warriors, the Clippers, the Lakers, the Blazers, the Nuggets. Knicks. I'm not skipping games here. Um, Pacers, Rockets, Magic, and the set. You know, schedule kind of calms down. But I mean, this is their test coming up, right? So I, I just think that um, they they're going to uh, we're going to find out a lot about the Bulls coming up here. 
their offense is going to need to improve um, incredibly, and their defense is going to have to stay where it's at. I mean, that's really all there is, and um, I just don't know that they're going to do that when with the competition they've been playing against. So I, I, I don't know. I So I don't think they're you know top of the East, but I do think they're kind of four or five, six seed. So um, me, I think the Bulls are for real, uh, but in a sense, they're just you know much improved compared to last season. Yeah, I think they finished like eleventh in the East or something like that. Now, when you look at you know the the additions that they made, you know in in free agency, you know Lonzo Ball, Demar Derozan, you know obviously that team is going to be much improved. Um, I watched a decent amount of the Bulls last year after the All Star break because we traded you know Vooch uh, to the Bulls, and I just wanted to see how he was going to play there and everything like that. Um, you know, the Bulls offensively last year, you know, they looked pretty good, but the biggest thing that they were lacking was really like a, you know, uh, perimeter defense. And I think with the additions of like Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, those guys have brought that. Now the Bulls right now are 12th in the league in offensive rating, scoring 107.8 points per 100 possessions. But the fact that they're getting it done right now on the defensive side um, is really what stands out to me. And, yeah, you can definitely talk about the opponents that they've played so far. I think that's totally fair. We need to see if they can do that against you know a team like the Utah Jazz, which they're going to play on Saturday in one of the best offensive teams in the league. Um, so they're really going to get their opportunity to prove you know whether or not um, you know, they are for real, but much improved compared to last year. I really like what they're doing. I think especially once Vooch gets going, like Vooch, I, if he scores 14 points on, for the whole year, I'd be a little bit surprised. I think he gets closer to like 18, 19 points per game. If you have three of those guys and DeRozan, Levine, and Vooch scoring just around 20 points per game, the offense is going to be in pretty good shape. And then if they can continue to defend at a high level, I'm right there with you. I think probably... Four or five is probably where I would peg them, um, you know, in terms of what where they'll finish in the Eastern Conference. It would be really exciting to see the Bulls have home court advantage in the playoffs this year as like a four seed. That would be a lot of fun. So I think we're mostly on the same page. We want to see a little bit more out of the Bulls, but we can agree they're much improved, you know, uh, you know, compared to where they were last year. All right, Luke. Uh, one other thing that we want to talk about, and then we'll talk. You know, we'll get into our degenerative uh you know discussions that we have in terms of you know gambling i did so poorly last week uh, but let's talk some about you know the nba rookies um you know how they've looked so far and uh, who are you know some of your favorite rookies to start the season uh my favorite rookie honestly um i have been partaking in a little bit of DraftKings action and there's a rookie that has stood out to me because of that um you know you doing DraftKings night in night out you know maybe every few days whatever you do you get to really look at a lot of these guys and see kind of where they're at in their game and you know value spots things like that the guy that I I played him on night one and that is Chris Duarte I mean Chris Duarte has stuck out to me um a lot I mean compared to what I thought that he was going to be um I mean obviously he's going to you know come back down to earth with some of these numbers but he's in a really good situation to really blossom there just because they they don't have you know a ton over there in Indiana they're not doing well this year uh, they're already off to a pretty poor start but Dorte just to give you an idea Jonathan 19.8 points per game uh two assists 4.8 rebounds um is shooting 7.3 attempts from three and is shooting 44.8 percent so Duarte just seems like a, a stud kind of like a plug and play he's going to hit his open shots he just looks good all the way around and I I've been really impressed with Duarte um, something pretty funny to see if you track you know rookie of the year odds anything like that um, there's a chart on sportsbettingdime.com that uh, is just literally just a physical chart of kind of odds and how that they've fluctuated from date to date well, beginning uh, in July, uh, Duarte was plus 3,500. Um, and then as of October 26th, yesterday, he was plus 775. So, and he's now a top five candidate for rookie of the year. So, and those, you know, those top five is, it's, uh, you know, Jalen Green is the, is the biggest favorite. Um, then you got Cade Cunningham, Scotty Barnes, Evan Mobley, and Chris Duarte. So um, those are kind of just the the top five right now. And Duarte is absolutely the one that, you know, has stood out most to me. 
And, you know, I might go put some money on there on Chris Dorte here soon um, before those odds get a little bit closer to uh, the first place position. Yeah, Chris Duarte, you know, he's definitely the guy um, that has surprised people the yeah. most. Um, you know, being the 13th pick in the draft, um, you know, just kind of on the end of the lottery there. Uh, not a guy that a lot of people had, you know, pegged to be, you know, rookie of the year or a candidate. And just like you said, shooting the crap out of yeah. the ball. 41 right now. Um, I think you're you're looking kind of like a game behind. This is updated. Um NBA.com. He's shooting 41.7% from the floor, 18.6 points per game. Um, 18.6 points per game, leading all rookies, 37 minutes per game, again, leading all rookies. So Chris Duarte is definitely the guy that has stood out the most, um, just kind of in terms of where they were drafted and maybe what was expected of them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my bias hat on. Uh, I'm going to talk about Franz Wagner of our Orlando Magic. So uh, eighth pick in the draft, uh, a guy that even Magic fans throughout – uh, you know, really right after the draft and in summer league and preseason when he wasn't looking great uh, shooting the ball. People were very, very critical of him and already calling him a bust and, you know, saying that the Magic wasted the eighth pick. And through five games, um, he's fifth in all rookie scoring 13.6 points per game uh, on 10.4 field goal attempts. He's shooting 51.9%, so almost 52% from the floor, and almost five three-point attempts. He's shooting 41.7% uh, while also adding 3.6 rebounds, 1.8 assists, um, one steal, and almost one block per game. So uh, Franz is just a guy who, um, really, Luke, we saw it tonight, is just always in the right position. Um, you know, He's making you know passes and moving the way that a guy 6'10", you don't think he might be able to make those passes or, or move that way. Uh, you know, we're seeing him switch on, a, you know, smaller guards. You know, we saw him playing the Knicks last week, switched on, to, you know, Derrick Rose, um, you know, Alec Burks tonight. He was switched on to LaMelo Ball a couple of times, looked pretty well. So Franz Wagner has just really been exciting, um, you know, to watch him just because we didn't really know what to expect as Magic fans. Uh, those of you that don't really follow the Magic all that much, uh, allegedly, after the pre-draft workout that he had for the Magic, which was totally kept a secret, uh, that news was not leaked until Franz leaked it on an Orlando Magic podcast following the draft. Um, but he was promised basically by the Orlando Magic that if he was there at 8, they were going to take him. Orlando Magic general manager John Hammond has also said since the draft that Franz Wagner was always the pick at 8, no matter who was available at 5, no matter who was available at 8. They were taking Franz Wagner with the eighth pick. So since hearing that, um, you know, I've started to suspect that he just absolutely crushed that yeah. workout. And Luke, I think we're seeing, um, you know, all of the things that the Magic saw in Franz Wagner uh, through five games. The Magic aren't playing particularly well, um, but one thing that we can count on every single night, it feels like, is Franz Wagner playing really, really well above expectations. Yeah, and and he's been, like you said, just impressive to say the least. I mean, the biggest thing for rookies is you know just letting the game come to them, finding the speed of the game, and kind of getting that all down pat. Franz Wagner looks like he's been playing for two seasons already in terms of just like his feel for the game. Like you said, knows you know when to hit guys. He his cutting ability is insane for a rookie. Just and that all factors into just his feel for the game. If he didn't have such a good feel for the game, he wouldn't be able to cut. He wouldn't be able to uh, find guys at the right time. Things like that. No, like you know, have his steps planned out. Like that is something Franz Wagner has done. And defensively, he's good, right? I mean, we we knew that. That was the one thing about Franz coming into um, you know draft night. Everybody knew defensively he's going to be uh, a solid player. Offensively, there were some questions, right? And so he's really eliminated a lot of those questions for me and has been consistently one of the best offensive players on the magic so far. Now we'll see kind of where his numbers dip when, you know, guys like J.I. and Chuma and Markel come back because there will be a dip um, unless Franz takes a huge leap right before they get back or maybe they elevate him so much that he's able to shine even more. And I think he will, but I don't think his numbers will pop like they, they might be right now through just a few games. And Jonathan, just to give you an idea, uh, back to this chart of, you know, rookie of the year odds, Franz is at uh, plus 4,000 right now, um, which seems like a lot. But, I mean, with the, the this pretty great odds, consider, all things considered, for Franz. I think that that would, be, uh, that would be, you know, a pretty good bet to place as well as Franz Wagner for Rookie of the Year, just as a long shot, because he could start to blossom when, when those guys come back. Who knows? 
Yeah, ten bucks basically wins you four hundred right. at at those odds. So it's you know you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. I think his uh you know his role is going to change a lot when some of those guys come back. Like you said, uh, we might not see like the raw production, you know, the points, the rebounds, but I think he has a chance to be even more efficient. You know, when those guys come back, which is really saying something. You know, he's doing stuff off the dribble. Um, that I don't think anybody, you know, at least Magic fans didn't really expect him to be able to do. So, yeah, Chris Duarte, Franz Wagner, those guys have really stood out to us, have been really impressive. Obviously, guys like Scotty Barnes, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, you know, those are three of the top four picks in the draft. Um, You know, pretty easy to project that those guys were going to, you know, get off to pretty good starts, but they're all playing uh, really well um, also. So, Luke, uh, let's take a quick break. We're going to have a word from our friends at Manscaped. And then we will talk some college and NFL bets. Attention, ballers. Basketball is back. Ben Simmons has 76 problems this season, but you can have none with our friends over at Manscaped. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped to keep their front and backcourt polished all year long. Trim with their new lawnmower 4.0, which is included in the Performance Package 4.0, and watch the hair fade away. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code 6th at manscaped.com. That's code 6th, S-I-X-T-H at manscaped.com. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor. A new multifunction on-off switch can engage a travel lock and gives you the ability to turn the 4,000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Did I mention this trimmer is waterproof too? And one. The Performance Package 4.0 also includes a free pair of Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs that will bring your boxer game to the next level. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code 6th at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code 6th, S-I-X-T-H. It's time you take care of your bricks this season. All right, Luke, uh, we're going to talk some NFL NCAA bets here I'm going to save our listeners a little bit of time and just let them know that I miss on every single one of my bets last week. The nice nest egg that I built up in my account is now all completely oh, gone. Good. So, um, yeah, I was really doing really well to start the season. I got a little bit too uh, uh, you know, comfortable with these teaser mm-hmm. bets, and I got burned in every single one this week in one way or the other. So, uh, but let's switch it to you. Let's talk. Uh, what what do you got for us this week in college? Yeah, and and last week in college for me, um, you know, I had a couple different bets. Obviously, I had Wake Forest minus three against Army. Wake Forest went on to uh, beat Army seventy to fifty six, um, and then we had uh, the under and LSU Ole Miss, and that was just a logic bet. That was this this over under seems too high. Just like the week before, we had done that with Tennessee Ole Miss. Um, it'll make an appearance for another game this week for me in college um, as well. Just logic playing a role. Last week, LSU Ole Miss uh, combined for 48 points, and I had under 76. So easy hit there for me. I went 2-0 um, on those picks. Um, and then you know this week, like I said, logic strikes again. Iowa, Iowa versus Wisconsin, the lowest over-under of the year, 36.5. I'm just saying it's too low. There's uh, there's no reason why the final score can't be 20 to 17. I mean, there's just no reason why this should be so low. I know the defenses are good, um, but I just feel really good about the over 36 and a half. No question. Um, now, the other one is one that might be a little bit of a heart pick uh, just based on what I've seen and how bad this team has burned me as of late. I'm going Georgia minus 14 over Florida. Um, I don't know that Florida is going to put up 17 points 14 points against this georgia defense it's ridiculous it's stupid and if florida's defense doesn't show up it's going to be a blowout so um i think that georgia can easily cover this minus 14 um so yeah so now i mean at this point in college i'm i'm 10 6 and 2 so far um so trail my bets as you wish um but doing pretty well this year as far as you know these picks and uh, those are my ones for college this week so, uh, you know, after Florida playing Alabama so closely earlier in the year, you think Georgia is just that much better than Alabama, or or what's changed for the Gators? Uh, the Gators had a lot on their side, and the, the biggest thing that was on their side that night was the fact that it was at home. I mean, Alabama had a number of false starts. That's 90,000 people in the stadium. They're loud. It's Alabama. Everyone's coming to, you know, to to that game, and it's going to be loud and give it, you know, they're all in terms of cheering for the Gators. 
I think that played a huge role. Um, now, Alabama, I think that they may just not be the team that we thought they were. They lose to Miss, they lose to Texas A&M 41-38. Um, they are having issues with Tennessee all last week till the fourth quarter and go on to double them up 52-24. to The game was not that big of a blowout. I think Georgia is far and away the, the best team in the country. RIP Gators. Yep. All right, Luke, let's talk a little NFL then. Um, so this week I'm swearing off teasers. Um, I don't even know that I'm going to throw this much money into my account to be able to make these bets. Um, but if I had to, um, just looking at you know a couple of the lines that jumped out to me, um, Dallas Cowboys, um, you know, they're, I believe, going to be uh, without you know one of their starting offensive linemen. But still, Dallas Cowboys, that offense is still so talented. Dak, Zeke. Um, you know, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, those guys, you know, at any given time can put up 30, 40 points. Um, so I'm taking them minus one and a half at the Minnesota Vikings. I don't know what it is. I will always and forever bet against Kirk Cousins. I do not believe in him whatsoever. And then the New York Giants, my New York football yep. Giants, a little bit of a heart pick here, playing pick. the Kansas City Chiefs on Monday Night Football. Um, it's in Kansas City, but the Giants right now are getting 10 points, so it's plus 10 New York Giants. We've got some guys coming back this week. Kenny Galladay should be back. Uh, Kadarius Toney should be back. We've still got Sterling Shepard. The defense looked really, really good this week, although we did just lose Jabril Peppers for the year uh, to a torn ACL. There's talks that Saquon might be back, although I really, really doubt that. Uh, but this is a struggling Chiefs team, obviously. Pat Mahomes leading the league um, right now in interception. So um, I'm hoping for a big game out of guys like Kadarius Toney, Kenny Galladay, Daniel Jones throwing the ball downfield, uh, and if the defense can look, you know, anywhere near as good as they did last week against, you know, it's the Carolina Panthers. I'm not trying to get a little, you know, too crazy, but um, yeah, Chiefs are struggling. You know, I think the Giants are starting to put some good things together. Uh, you know, if uh, Andrew Thomas can come back, uh, the offensive line didn't look a horrible this week either. So yeah, I'm taking the Giants plus ten, and then last I've got Titans at Indianapolis plus one. Luke, you might be able to fill me in. I have no idea what's going on with this line, um, why the Colts would be you know, favored over the Titans at all. Uh, the Titans, last couple of weeks, are starting to play really, really well. Um, and Indianapolis, Indianapolis Colts, Carson Wentz, uh, I mean, I know they just beat the 49ers, but I do not trust Carson Wentz uh, basically as much as I trust Kirk Cousins. So uh, I'll take the, uh, the Titans plus one at Indianapolis. What about you? Yeah, so kind of just looking at it, um, a lot of, you know, the sharp bets are coming in on uh, Indianapolis short, just solely because of uh, the Titans are going to be without their top three tackles. Um, the Colts are eight and two straight up in October over the past three seasons and seven and three against the spread at home against the Titans. Um, so they're just going with the home team for them. They're thinking that's a letdown spot with the history. Yep. And they're they're thinking the Titans are in a letdown spot after their huge win that they had. Um, also to say, you know, as far as the Giants came with, you know, just to give you a little bit more hope there too. New York uh, is looking to improve to twenty three and seven, and its last thirty as a road dog. So they're they are currently twenty two and seven, as John, Jonathan puts on his Giants hat. Um, the Giants are twenty two and seven in their last thirty games as being a, a road underdog. So I think the numbers there to back it up, Jonathan. I think that's a that's a, a bet that I will probably place this weekend, even though it's not one of my top two picks this week. Um, it is definitely number three for me. So. Um, but my first, you know, bet here, um, I'm seven and seven on the year with NFL bets. Last week I had Ravens minus six against the Bengals. Huge swing and a miss. Um, but I did tell you that uh the Giants plus three versus Carolina. I couldn't trust the Panthers as road favorites without it CMC. I don't trust Darnold. Um all of those things just factoring into the game. Giants obviously, as we know, go on to win the game convincingly. So seven and seven on the year for me so far in the NFL bet uh, department. Um I've and I'm going back to the well also. So I'm going Falcons minus three versus the Panthers. This is not because I love the Falcons by any means. This is because I think the Panthers are are that bad. Um, that uh that Kyle Pitts uh, tight end pick for me in fantasy is turning out to be you know quite the that pick. Kyle Pitts I guy think he's, uh, a, a, among um, rookies. I think he's the number one uh, you know rated pass catcher on Pro Football Focus well, right now. Um, you know that Kyle Pitts guy. He's pretty. He's Even pretty above good. Above Jamar Chase. Yeah, above Jamar Chase, and that's a stud there, right there. Who's a freaking that's, animal? He's yeah. So, um, 
heard it that he, you know, not seeing the white stripes on the ball, you For know, the they play with mm-hmm. a bigger ball in college. I was, I was like, all right, that is the most strange thing I've ever heard, and he's making anybody that worried about that look like a Yeah, no, he looks great. He looks great. And, yeah, Kyle Pitts, I mean. Well, I also have him fantasy, not to you know, brag right. too much. But yeah. yeah, so, I mean, studs. So, um, I've got Falcons minus three against the Panthers. They're 0-4 without CMC. My other reason I wrote down was Darnold sucks. Um, I, don't, I, don't, very fair. I don't trust any, and he just got yanked last week. So... You're you're looking at a QB who got yanked last week. No CMC. The the writing's on the wall. The Panthers are just going to get their doors blown off uh, this weekend um, by the Falcons. So and Falcons are starting to find their offensive rhythm too with Pitts and, and and Matt Ryan kind of finding their footing here. I think that the Falcons could could win by a lot. Um, I've also got one for tonight as you guys are listening. Um, I'm taking the Cardinals minus six and a half against the Packers. Um, I'm taking it solely because there's no Devonta Adams. Um, they don't have a defensive coordinator. That's the Packers. Um, they won't have a de- defensive coordinator losing a lot of guys to the COVID IR list here. Um, Cardinals are six and one against the spread this year. The Packers barely escape Washington. I think that it's, it's all there for the Cardinals to put it together and win this game pretty convincingly. The Cardinals are for real. And I think that they can make the Packers pay as far as the injuries and the, the people that, you know, staff they're missing as a result. Luke, speaking of fantasy, how are you uh how are you doing this year so far in fantasy football? Um, I'm doing okay. I'm in one fantasy football league. Um I didn't think I was gonna be in one. I accepted it, and um we are four and three. So my first week I legitimately didn't set my lineup. I think OBJ was hurt that week and he was in my starting lineup. Didn't 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 do anything with him. Um then I was like, okay, rookie mistake. Need to get my act together. You know, when bye weeks come along, I'm riding the waiver wire. That's where the good, you know, the great separate from the good. The guys that actually are active on the waiver wire come bye weeks. I'm all over the waiver wire. You know, I'm picking up guys. I'm currently, like I said, four and three. I'm going up this week against a guy who's six and one. So we'll see how that'll shake out. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well, all things considered. So I'm in two leagues. Um, one league, the league that I think I probably have the best chance, uh, you know, of winning the entire league. Um, right now, um, I'm second most points scored in the mm-hmm. league. Um, I'm just behind the first place guy uh, by seven points. Uh, three of the first seven weeks, I've been the highest scoring uh, team in the league. But I'm sitting at four and three, um, just because looking at the standings here, yeah, I've got the most points scored against in the entire league. Mm-hmm. So. It's just kind of this weird, you know, kind of back and forth where one week I'll just blow up and then the next week I'll do okay and then the other team will just blow up. So sitting at four and three right now, the ESPN app gives me a 98% chance of making the playoffs. So I'm pretty happy about that. And then in my other league, I am currently sitting at five and two. Um, In this this league, there's, you know, divisions. But right now, um, I think overall I'm third in the league. Um, Not so high up on the, you know, points scored, uh, but the first week of the season, uh, my team just really did not perform all that well. Scored 89 points the first week, but since then I dropped 158, 133, 130, 138, 146, 148. What change so, that you were scoring 89 really, to that. So my first week, Barkley gave me 3.7 points. Aaron Jones gave me 4.2 yeah. points. Kyle Pitts gave me 7 points. Baltimore defense gave me minus 1 point. Graham Gano gave me 1 point. So. Yeah. Literally, that's you know five out of you know my nine or ten starters, whatever it is, scored in single digits or gave me negative points. So I think my you know numbers on the year would look a lot better if you took away that first week from me. So um, that second league that I just said, this is my fourth year in the league, and uh, each of the first three years I've made the Super Bowl in this league. I won it the first year, lost it the last two, and I'm hoping to make my fourth straight Super Bowl. Yeah, so, I'm. I'm feeling pretty good right now about yeah, fantasy. Yeah, and I, I think the tides really turned for me, Jonathan, when I uh, traded Chris Carson, who would go on to get injured, um, for Terry McLaurin, essentially. There were some other pieces. Oh, McLaurin. There was some other beast. you know stuff happening there, um, but that was back in September. Um, I had some, there were some other players involved. It was a two for two, basically. Um, I gave him Devin Single, or I gave him Devontae Parker and Chris Carson. He gave me Devin Singletary and Terry McLaurin. McLaurin was the only thing I wanted in that trade. That was, you know, like 
Yeah, you won that. So That's, that guy's yeah. Moron. Well, especially since Carson got hurt um, this week, though, Jonathan, I'm making a big, big boy move here. Um, Aaron Rodgers oh, is boy. typically my starting quarterback. I've got Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones. So week one that killed me because they both had like three points. Um, that was another reason I lost right. week one. Got smashed by yeah. the Saints. So yeah. I am making a business decision this week to start Joe Burrow against the Jets instead of Aaron Rodgers against oh. Arizona. Um, I think you can't go wrong either no, way No, you can't. And so I'm going to go Joe Burrow, though. Burrow's been I haven't started out. Burrow at all this year because Rodgers, I've just been too hesitant to, to doubt Rodgers by any means. That's just too good of a matchup against the Jets. So, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, going to roll with uh, Joe Burrow this week. All right, Luke, anything else before we wrap up here? Oh, man, I think that's it. Awesome. All right, well, big thank you again to our patrons. If you guys are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a five-star rating and review. All of that goes a long way. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, We're going to keep these episodes coming each week. I really appreciate you guys listening. For Luke, this has been Jonathan. You guys are listening to Shoot the Shot, and we will catch you guys next time. See ya.